Hello and salam. Welcome to the Muslim Viewpoint powered by American Muslim Today, the nonprofit national digital newspaper that's transforming the narrative about Muslims in the West through public service and community journalism. I'm Rifat Malik, I am AMT's editor in chief. And today we have a post midterm election special. Our reporters, Hadiya Spalic and Maya Gaylor, spoke to voters on election day at one polling station in Collin County, the East Plano Islamic Center, EPIC, which is a natural hub for the Muslim Collin uh, community as well as the general public. They asked residents what issues made them want to come out and vote as they exited the polls. Here's what they had to say. Um, you know, mainly just like issues about like, you know, women's rights. And uh, honestly, my dad told me about tax issues, so he told me, so, you know, he told me to come out and vote, so I, I listened to that too as well. Honestly, I feel like um, in order for our democracy to work, everyone has to vote. Like, even if it doesn't matter who you vote for, really, but if not everyone votes, then, you know, our democracy is able to function the way it was meant to be. So that's why it's, I just feel like it's really important to vote. Uh, mainly women's rights. Um, just because you know it directly affects all of us I've had it uh, I've had to not kind of face it directly but I've known people that have had issues with it right at the time when Roe versus Wade was you know getting overturned and it was a uh, not a fun experience <laughs> uh, mostly how much I dislike Greg Abbott and the entire Republican executive uh, all of it <laughs> uh, Honestly, it's because I was too lazy to early vote, and I'm really sick and tired of existing in a state of 30 million people that is completely unrepresentative at a governmental level. So it's really irritating to grow up in a state that just simply doesn't care about you. I uh, just think it's important to come out and uh, let your voice be heard. And this is what you know allows us as Americans to put people in office that uh, we feel have the best morals and values uh, that match up with us and our families. Right now, the economy's not doing very great, so I think it's a very important time to uh, get out with uh, inflation and gas prices and um, a lot of stuff going on with border security. It's a uh, important time to get out and vote uh, for a change, of course, and see some improvements in the areas we live. Housing, infrastructure, schools, etc. Yeah. So our voices are heard. You know, so like not just majority, minority. They also have an influence in the election. Yeah. Yeah. It is a fundamental constitutional right, and uh, it's an opportunity to bring in the change, to voice our opinion, and select the people who we like who can bring in the change. Um, I don't think any specific issue made me come out of vote. I mean, I always vote. Make it a point to do that. Okay. And that's the only way to express your opinions, right? I mean, otherwise, if you're not voting, and someone who has opinions that are not aligned with yours is voting and electing people that you don't agree with. Okay. It is a civic duty. Mm -hmm. It is a responsibility as a citizen that everybody has to give their mandate. Mm -hmm because the people who will be electing, they will affect your life. So everybody should understand it. Yeah, as a citizen, I think it's my responsibility to do it. <laughs> Voting not only now, every time, any time, any type's election is important. That's the purpose of the election, right? That somebody will be representing you, so you have to know who are they, and because they'll be eventually affecting your life. So not only now, every time, even coming 500 years ago, uh, beyond. I think everybody should vote. I've been voting for 75 years and I feel it's my civic duty and, and sort of a right to vote. Now, for numbers and statistics concerning Muslim candidates and voter turnout, we spoke to MGAGE, a national Muslim American civic engagement organization, and their national organizing director, Mohammed Gula. Uh, we don't have the nation yet, and, and we actually don't even have the uh, Texas yet just because votes haven't been certified yet. Mm -hmm. So the only um, numbers that we would have right now, and, and because numbers are still coming in and because folks are still counting, especially when it comes down to provisional early vote and absentee votes, um, uh, we won't have that for like another week or two. Um, however, what we do have... Uh, is just some early vote numbers that were 
uh, prelim, preliminary that we ran uh, in some of our states. And, and we only operated actually in uh, 11 states, um, and, or sorry, 10 states. And so we have the numbers for those 10 states. Um, but aside from that, uh, what we have is like the early vote numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do early you have those test. numbers? I'm sorry. Do you have those numbers for Texas? Yeah. Right. So for Texas, um, we have uh, 74,126 um, registered Muslim voters who uh, had voted early and were absentee by, and the date that we ran that was November 6th. Okay. And you said uh, you did it in 10 states. Um, which 10 states was that? Yeah, it is uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, Virginia, Florida, Maryland, Texas, New York, New Jersey, and uh, Minnesota. Okay. All right. And do you have the total numbers for all 10 of those states? The total numbers of our Muslim registered voters? Yes. The early voters. Uh, Oh, oh, that early voted. Yeah. The only one was actually um, New York. So New York does not release its early vote numbers um, before. They don't start actually counting until later. So each each state is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, I do have that. And, and in those 10 states, not counting um, New York, uh, we actually had 231,000 uh, Muslims who had voted early and or absentee. And um, could you tell us about the Muslim candidates that were elected uh, this year? Yeah, um, well, we still have some numbers coming in. We did endorse uh, uh, some Muslim candidates that were in our kind of uh, that we have been watching and that we have been uh, looking out for. Let me pull up that list that I have. So the folks that um, we had endorsed and had been watching, of course, we have Andre Carson and Hanan Omar Rashida Tlaib, which we all knew. We also endorsed Atif Mahmoud, who actually lost uh, out of California Congressional District 40. Um, we also did some work in Minnesota for uh, Keith Ellison, who, who, ran, who was the Attorney General uh, who was protecting his seat. It was a very close race. Um, the state legislature, um, we did support Fat Mike Paul Zubair out of California, but she also lost. We have Medina Anton Wilson, who was reelected. Um, and then we have some other folks like Jason Dawkins, Robert Jackson, Charles Fall. A lot of these folks are, are out of New York and Pennsylvania. Um, Sam Bedoun, of course, and Bas Farhat out of Michigan, Ibrahim Ayash out of Michigan, Sharia Martini ended up losing out of Michigan, Aisha Faruqi ended up losing out of Michigan, but in Texas, of course, we have Salman Bo uh, Bojani and Suleiman Leilani, who both won in their state house seats. Um, we also have Christopher Benjamin out of Florida, who won. Ismail, um, we're watching right now Ismail Mohammed and Munira Abdullahi, both of them uh, ran for state representative in Ohio. Um, I, I have to look at what the updated numbers were. But the last I saw, I believe they were ahead. I can get you that here momentarily. I can even email it to you guys. Okay. Um, we also have, of course, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Rahman uh, out of Georgia, Dawa Roman out of Georgia, um, who both won. Said of Jafar uh, out of New Jersey, who, of course, won. Uh, Nabila Islam, who won. Uh, I do have to check in on Farouk Mogul, Afreen Chowdhury, Josh Uden, um, just because I haven't been able to catch up on them. But I don't, I don't think that they ended up winning. But we did have Nabila Sayed out of Illinois who did win. Mm. Um, those were the main ones that we had really watched. And if you want <laughs> me to send you a list of the folks that we were watching, um, I'm happy to, of course, send that over to you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I, I haven't fully updated the list in regards to who won and who lost just yet, just because we do have a lot of 
numbers that were really coming in, and a lot of our priorities were also um, to see if we can flip uh, certain state houses, uh, protect the state house, protect, or protect the the U.S. House, protect the U.S. Senate, uh, and then flip some state house and state senate. Like in Michigan, for example, we now have control of both the 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 House, the Senate, and the executive, and, and same in Maryland. So. And when you guys were doing your research um, for these midterms, did you come across any specific issues that Muslims cared about uh, when they were making their decisions in terms of voting? Yeah, that was a great question. So, um, of course, the, the foreign policy issues uh, were, were always important. I think that you always find those in the top five, depending on which ethnicity of person you're talking to or which race of person you're talking to, you'll find that usually foreign policy will uh, always come up. Uh, but really what we saw this time around, we did hear a lot of issue around uh, the economic um, kind of, uh, I guess you could say, upturn or downturn. Uh, so inflation came up a lot. Gas prices came up. Um, the, the access to, of course, affordable health care came up issues of uh, working towards a public option and more affordable, uh, the, the health care affordability. Um, student loan forgiveness actually came up uh, pretty heavily and uh, also notating that uh, it was not enough <laughs> and that we should continue working on it towards um, attacking or, or, or uh, kind of organizing around predatory lending when it comes down to the affordability of higher education. Um, we also had uh, social and economic issues that had come up, of course. Um, we did hear a lot of crime rates, criminal justice reform. Um, we also heard a lot of uh, uh, access to uh, economic mo kind of um, grants and mobility, small business ownership. Um, so it was like a, kind of a very, I guess you can say, a wide number of issues that had come up fairly fairly often however uh what we saw was that it was no different from even the general public uh but then when you of course started to talk about issues regarding like foreign policy that was something that we heard a lot of especially during the primary more than we did during the general um and that came up during the primary more than the general just because during the primary there were specific foreign policy issues like the issue of Palestine, the issue of Kashmir, the Uyghurs, um, Burma. A lot of those issues were issues that we brought up during our um, endorsement process uh, because we do endorsement interviews before we do an endorsement. Uh, and those were issues that really decided whether we were going to go with a specific congressional candidate or not. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us, you know, why it's important um, for your organization to do the work that you do in terms of getting out the Muslim vote and making sure that your community um, has a say in our democracy? Yeah, of course. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's always important. I think very often a lot of folks really talk about how important the vote is and to really make your voice heard. Uh, and, and I do believe that that is a part of it, and I do believe that it is a duty. Uh, but beyond that, we actually do believe that civic engagement in general is very holistic and that voting is just one part of the equation. And that after you elect the people that you want to see in office and that you want to represent you, regardless of if they win or lose, it is actually our duty to maintain that civic engagement, to maintain that relationship, to ensure that our stories, our experiences um, are consistently heard and sometimes even prioritized if there's a level of injustice there. Um, the beauty of, and, and this is something that we always remind ourselves, is that the beauty of the Muslim community is our diversity. Um, in our diversity, we are the most diverse faith-based community in the nation, actually. And, and so what we'll find is that there's a huge spectrum of where we kind of sit on a lot of issues. And so that the only way that we can actually change the system or ensure that the system is representative of us is if we are engaged. Um, and so that's, that's really at the core of, of what our job is. And um, I also look at civic engagement 
as somewhat of a privilege because there are, and this is just the reality of when we knock on doors, make calls and text, um, there's a large portion of our, of, of, of our, not just community in the Muslim community, but just there's a large portion of Americans who really do struggle to make ends meet and who have real issues that, that kind of impede on their ability to, to actually get out and vote. So we do look at civic engagement not only as a right and duty, but also as a privilege. Um, so many of us who are, uh, who come from families of immigrants come from homes that uh, civic engagement was not necessarily allowed, me being one of them, uh, my parents being from Libya. And so uh, to be able to ensure that I could vote, my vote count, uh, and ensure that my experience and 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 um, my community's experience is a part of the overall American fabric is always going to be important and key to us being able to move towards, um, I guess you can say, policies and laws that are also representative of our experience. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining us from me and our team. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at American Muslim Today. And if you'd like to access more digital content, feel free to check out our website at AmericanMuslimToday.com. See you next time on The Muslim Viewpoint.